In today's video we are looking at the Olympus VF2 which is the same as the Leica EVF. Hello, welcome back, Matt from MrLeica.com. So today we are looking at the Olympus VF2. Now I realise I'm late to the party and this is not new technology and far from it. I think it was first released in 2015. But after recently looking at the Leica SL, I suddenly realised that the EVF may be a good alternative to use my existing cameras with an EVF. So to start, I'm no stranger to electronic viewfinder cameras. Yes, I use rangefinder cameras such as the Leica M with optical rangefinders and no EVF. But then I also use cameras such as the amazing little Leica CL, which you've seen in previous videos, and this does have an EVF. So you may ask if I already have a electronic viewfinder camera, why did I need to buy a separate second EVF unit? The reason I bought the EVF unit is because the Leica CL gives me crop sensor, electronic viewfinder style photography via a Leica body. But I wanted to use some of my lenses on a full frame setup. And they are lenses which are not rangefinder coupled so I cannot use them via the rangefinder on the Leica M camera. So the obvious option which I tried in a recent video was test out the Leica SL. So the Leica SL gives me full frame, the same as the M240, but with an electronic viewfinder rather than a optical viewfinder. I then also tested the Leica SL2, um, similar to the SL, and just trying to work out the, the kind of the best options for me personally. Now after looking at the images from the Leica SL and the Leica SL2, one thing you may notice, or I seem to notice, is the Leica M240 in the, in the example where I did a test of the Leica M240 versus SL and then also did some photos with the SL2. The Leica M images are much more kind of organic looking or I don't know, they seem to have a slightly more film-like quality to them than the SL images. The Leica SL images when I came to edit them reminded me more of my Nikon D800 photos. Quite perfect but equally lacking something. That was the reason I moved away from the Nikon D800 because I'd spend so much time trying to add life into the photos. I found the Leica MT40 I get much more pleasing photos even though it took me a long time to get used to it coming from the Leica M8 and the Leica M9 which have even more film-like and amazing image quality. So my plan was to get the electronic viewfinder for the Leica M camera and then use one camera system to use for the optical rangefinder for the majority of my photography and then the electronic viewfinder for specific needs when I feel the EVF will give me an advantage. When I was looking at the like SL it suited me for certain aspects of my photography but I'm still a rangefinder boy at heart and so having a totally non-rangefinder camera was not ideal to me I think. So that's a little bit of background about why I bought the electronic viewfinder. Now let's go into it in more detail. So if you're not already aware, you can get a Olympus branded electronic viewfinder or you can get a Leica branded electronic viewfinder. Both units are said to be identical, but because one has the Olympus name on instead of the Leica name on, the price is cheaper. Being someone that appreciates good value, I therefore went for the Olympus version. What you get in the box is the VF2, obviously the box itself, you get kind of a carrying pouch if you're interested in such things. And then the unit itself, if I put my hand behind it to help you see, there's the unit and then to place it on the camera you need to take off this kind of cover and then to protect it when it's out of use, slide that back on like so. So that's the viewfinder but what you may ask is how much does it cost? So I did my usual price check on eBay and you can pick them up for around £120 used for the Olympus version. The VF2, which is the model that I've got, this one. Or if you want the Leica version, it's £200. So you're paying, getting close to double the price just to have the Leica branded one. I noticed you can still buy these new on Amazon for £185 for the Olympus version. Now when you compare that to the cost of a used Leica SL camera, which is the other option that would give me full frame and an EVF, 
like SL, as I said in my SL review, seems to cost around £1,850 used. And then equally, if you wanted a CL and you're happy with the APS-C crop sensor, you can pick up a used like a CL for £1,500. So you've got 1850 SL, 1500 for CL, or around £100, pounds for an EVF for your existing Leica M camera. Now do be aware, if you've not seen these before, this version fits the Leica M240 and the older M cameras, but it doesn't fit the Leica M10. So if you have a Leica M10, you need to buy the Leica M10 specific viewfinder. So if we fit the electronic viewfinder onto the M240, take off the cover, and then it fits onto the camera hot shoe, like so. So it slides into your hot shoe, and there you go, if you can see that. Now in terms of specification, you can view your image from zero degrees to 90 degrees. So that can be quite handy if you're doing tripod landscape photography and you're kind of wanting to kind of look down onto the camera, which is obviously a nice feature that you wouldn't normally have using a Leica camera. The viewfinder comes with a diopter, which is perfect for me because I'm slightly short-sighted, so that's like a big plus for me personally. The finder gives you 100% coverage and 1.15% magnification. Depending on the camera that you use, you can also get these in black or silver. I'm more than happy to have black, but you can get a silver one if you have a full silver setup. I know I have a silver camera, but I worry less about the, the look of the camera. As long as it takes good pictures, that's me more or less happy. So in terms of using the electronic viewfinder, what you need to do is turn on your camera as normal. And once you've turned on the camera, you need to turn on live view by clicking here. Like so, and then you can see me. <laughs> And then you press the button on the EVF and it takes the image from the screen to the EVF. And there you go, you can see me looking slightly better in black and white. <laughs> the reason it's showing in black and white is because I've got the camera set to black and white mode. And now instead of viewing through the normal rangefinder, you view through the electronic viewfinder. So I'm looking at you guys in front of me and then to zoom in, there's a small button on the front of the like M camera here and you press that and it zooms in you guys to make it more magnified. I can now critically focus you guys on the screen and now once you come to play your image if you press play you'll realize you cannot see anything and what you need to do is you need to turn the EVF view back to the screen view so you can see the image through the EVF so to be able to view the image, you need to turn off the EVF. And there's the image of you guys or the camera in front of me, the GH5. So really simple setup. In terms of speed of use, it's much slower than using the normal optical rangefinder. But for when you need it, it gives you everything you need. So in terms of some pros and cons of the electronic viewfinder, I've tried to make a list. So electronic viewfinder versus just buying a like SL. The reason the electronic viewfinder is better than the SL for me personally is because you're going to get M style photos from the M style digital sensor, which has a completely different look to the SL sensor. Both the like SL and the M240s you probably know are full frame Leica sensors, but the M sensor gives a slightly more filmic look, I think, than the SL sensor. So for that reason, the low priced EVF for me is a much better option. If it was by an EVF or a Leica CL, they both do different things. If you want to travel super light or work really quickly, use the Leica CL with a autofocus lens such as this, 18mm, uh, which is a 28mm equivalent. You'll see this again in the future. I'll do a proper review on it. So if you want a small setup, get this Leica CL. But if you need a full frame sensor with the like M look, get the EVF. Now for any of you with a keen eye, you may notice that I've got a Nikon lens mounted on my Leica. And you're probably like, what is he doing? I've got the Nikon lens on the M240 partly to show you because the EVF now allows me to use any non-range finder coupled lens. 
So normally when you're using an upscroll viewfinder, you need to have range find a couple of lenses. But with an EVF, you can use any lens on your Leica M camera, as long as you have an adapter. So what I'm using is the Nikon 2 Leica adapter. And now I can use all my Nikon lenses on my Leica M240, just to kind of play around with. Arguably Leica lenses are much better, but certain lenses might have special characteristics, which you might only be able to get from Nikon and there may not be a similar lens from Leica, for example. So in this example, this vintage Nikkor 28mm lens will focus to 0.3 meters. Whereas, as you probably know, Leica rangefinder lenses will only focus as close as 0.7 meters. So straight away, this Nikon lens will give me a totally different look to my 28mm images for the simple reason that I can focus closer. So you can pretty much use any lens as long as you can find an adapter to convert your lens to Leica mount. Another great example of an amazing lens is this Voigtlander Nocturne 58mm f1.4. Now this lens is stunning. I showed some example photos in the rangefinder versus SLR video. And in non-pixel people terms, this lens gives you images almost as close as the Leica Simulux 50mm 1.4 aspherical. This is an extremely good lens for the price when you th think how much Leica lenses cost. So I can now use this in my Leica M240, so I'll have to try that and share some examples with you at some point. So another advantage, as well as non-range finder coupled lenses, is you can use range finder coupled lenses that are not calibrated to your range finder camera. So a real example of this is my Jupiter 3 50mm 1.5. Now this lens is not calibrated to my like M cameras, so I've only been able to use it on mirrorless cameras. But now with an electronic viewfinder, I can use the amazing Jupiter 3 on the M240. So that's another combination I'm excited to try out. Now another fantastic lens that I can use on the Leica M240 is this Voigtlander 35mm 1.2 spherical version 2. So this is the version 2, the larger lens. Um, I've done a review on this already. Now why this lens is special is this lens will focus in 0.5 meters. It's a standard Leica M bayonet fit lens designed for Leica M mount cameras. But the difference to most Leica lenses is Leica lenses focus to 0.7 meters and are designed to 0.7 meters. This lens will focus down to 0.5 meters. Now 0.5 meters on a 1.2 lens can create some pretty special things. So one of the main reasons for getting the electronic viewfinder for the M240 is to use this lens. This will be my Keller Combo, the 35 1.2 on the like M240 with the electronic viewfinder, in this case made by Olympus. That is a really strong combination. And the best of it is I have all the lenses and cameras already. So, so it allows me to get more out of my existing kit without having to buy additional lenses or additional camera bodies. So this is how the combination looks with the Voigtlander 1.2, the EVF on the M240. Now I shot some example photos using this exact setup in London, so I'll share those. And I think you'll agree that the look is quite unique and quite special. It's the first time using that setup, so I'll get better at it. But I'm really impressed with kind of the, the test shots that I got. Uh, thanks to having two amazing models probably helped. So Pro so far, you can use it with non-rangefinder coupled lenses. You can use it with rangefinder lenses, which are not calibrated. You can use it with rangefinder lenses, which will focus closer than 0.7 meters. And then there's still more benefits to come. You can use it with wide angle lenses, such as the 21mm F4 Voigtlander Color Scope R. I've already done a review on that lens, amazing lens. To explain further, if you use the 21mm on the Leica M240, you'd normally have to use a hot shoe viewfinder, optical viewfinder, or you'd have to use the EVF to compose because there's no 21mm frame lines on the M240. So by having the EVF attached, you can see the full frame that the 21mm lens can see and thereby compose accurately and not have to kind of guesstimate your composition, which is obviously a massive plus. In addition to wide lenses, it's also really effective for long lenses, such as the 135mm Leica F4 lens. Again, I've done a review on that lens already. The reason it's very useful for long lenses is if you can visualize the viewfinder on a Leica M240, the longer the lens, the smaller the, the frame line in the center of the, the viewfinder, meaning it's more and more difficult to kind of compose and basically see, see your shots. Having the electronic viewfinder basically fills the screen with the whole image so you can both compose easily and focus easily. So another big win for the electronic viewfinder. And then lastly, the electronic viewfinder is especially popular for using with fast lenses, such as the 
51.4 Summerlux or the Leica Noctilux 50mm f1 or maybe the 75mm Apo or 90mm f2. All of those lenses give very shallow depth of field and so having an EVF makes it much easier because you can zoom in to critically focus. So for £120 the, the, the list of benefits just seems pretty much endless. I feel a bit of a dumbass for not buying one of these five years ago but you'll see as this channel progresses I'm kind of learning as I'm going and then as I learn I share it with you. So I'm not an expert I'm just a normal guy probably with a smaller brain than average but a lot of passion so it kind of it equals out. In terms of the negatives for the electronic viewfinder, number one, it is much slower than using the optical viewfinder because you're having to look at your photo and for me personally, zoom in, take a shot and using an optical rangefinder for me personally is a much faster way to focus. So it's slower. Number two, it makes the camera larger, not by a huge amount, but it does make the camera larger. And then lastly, one disadvantage of the EVF is it takes over the hot shoe meaning if you want to use a hot shoe for something else, you now no longer have that option. A real example of this is if you want to do flash photography. So for me personally, normally I'd put a flash on the top of the camera or a, a hot shoe trigger to fire off camera flash on the top of the camera on the hot shoe. With the EVF fitted, I no longer have that option. So I would have to remove the EVF. To fit mine in this case, Godox 350TT small flash really good flash i can put a link in the description if you want a small flash for your leica and don't want to pay leica prices so i guess if you don't do flash trophy there is very little negatives in the little electronic viewfinder now looking at my camera setup as i have it here you may have one obvious question why do i need an electronic viewfinder if i have a optical viewfinder magnifier to allow me to critically focus now if you didn't see the review on the optical 1.4 viewfinder magnifier I can link this at the end of this video because this is an excellent accessory especially if you shoot with fast 50mm lenses or say longer lenses. So why do I need both? There is some overlap in terms of what features they offer but personally I'll use the optical viewfinder magnifier for 90% of my photography because it allows me to critically focus quickly and accurately whereas the electronic viewfinder is much slower. Now for any situation where the Optical viewfinder doesn't help me, such as using third-party lenses, such as the Nikon Mount Voigtlander. In that situation, the optical viewfinder magnifier is not going to help you because these lenses are not rangefinder coupled. So in that scenario, I would obviously use the EVF. So in terms of which one do you buy, I would say ideally both. But for price, I would get the maybe EVF first. So if you have the question electronic viewfinder or optical viewfinder magnifier, the EVF offers better value for money, but if you bought your Leica M rangefinder camera to use the rangefinder, uh, get the 1.4 magnifier because you're still using then the proper rangefinder and it's it keeps with the keeping of the design of the, the M camera. Having the electronic viewfinder kind of converts the M camera into, I guess, more like a hybrid camera. Using the EVF, you lose the rangefinder experience, but equally it gives you so many more options. So for that reason, it's good. for me personally, it's good to have both because I use different tools for different jobs. So that's my review of the electronic viewfinder for my like M240. As I say I realise I'm very late to the party. Most people that wanted one of these has probably already got one but perhaps for the 1% of people which haven't heard of one and haven't got one hopefully this video might add some value and you can see how many kind of benefits this small device can bring at a non like a price. So, so really happy and glad to have picked one up, especially now I'm kind of experimenting with non like lenses. As with all my videos, please give me a like if you enjoyed the content and drop me a message in the comments. Do you use an electronic viewfinder on your M camera? Do you use the Leica version or the Olympus version? Do you use the M10 version or the M240 version? Do you also like the EVF or do you find you don't like it? I'd love to hear regardless. If you've not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. And I've tried not to mention it too much in this video, but if you're not on Patreon, I honestly feel like you're missing out because I'm doubling up my content, meaning I'm putting out as many videos on Patreon now as I'm putting on YouTube. So I'll try not to mention the P word anymore, but, but definitely do come and check us out. Links below. Can I say hello? Hello. Can I say hello to the camera? Hi. <laughs> Hello, I'm Hannah Creeper. Hello, my name is Anne. 
I'm really enjoying the content and I hope you will too. Thanks for watching this video and back soon with more YouTube content and Patreon content. Thanks for watching.